Today, we are joined by self-advocate, writer, artist, photographer, substitute teacher, and presenter Robin Fry. Robin first attended the Real Voices, Real Choices Conference in 2009 and has been moving forward ever since. She is active in her community as secretary and board member at the Walsworth Community Center and as a member of the North Missouri Art Council. She lives in Marceline, Missouri with her dog, Trini, and five outdoor cats. Please join me in welcoming Robin. My presentation for today is What's Up? Staying Positive and Proactive. And this is a very exciting time for all of us, even though this is a challenging time. This is our first ever virtual conference for Real Voices, Real Choices, and I'm very happy to be part of that. And I want to welcome you all. And if this is your first time here, normally what I would do is I would ask everybody to raise their hands and I would talk specifically with you for a few seconds. But since this is how we're doing it, I'll just go ahead and tell you that we are in the middle of very exciting times right now. And I'm glad that you're getting to be a part of this. And for those that are just tuning in, welcome. It's good to see all of you here and to get a chance to talk with you, and I, I'm sure I'll be communicating with you through email as well. So let's get started. Here's kind of a brief introduction, which has kind of changed since the last time that I would spoken with the RVRC conference committee. In fact, now I have seven outdoor cats as opposed to five, and three of those cats are new ones that I just adopted, and so I've kind of got a Brady Bunch style family, you might say. Um, anyway, um, this is kind of a little bit of an intro here that you can also read later about some of the things I'm doing. There are a lot of new changes. Recently, I took a course during, during this crisis, since I couldn't substitute teach, I started taking some courses to better myself, and so now I am a certified email marketing specialist. So I will be hanging my shingle soon to start work there. So let's get started here. How to get the most from this presentation. As, I, as mentioned, the, pre the presentation is called What's Up? So what does that mean? That means that we are going to talk about ways to stay up and keep ourselves going even during times of crisis. So this could be something that could be used anytime, not just in this particular time frame, but anytime something is going on, anytime you're facing a challenge, anytime you're in a new situation, anytime that just anything is going on, you can get the most out of staying positive, and we need to stay more positive than ever. And after all, being positive and proactive doesn't happen overnight. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of practice. I'm still learning things as I go along. and. This has been quite an interesting experience setting up, as this is my first time ever giving a virtual presentation. So I'm very excited. So we're all going to be learning together from this. I have included some definitions and terms, which I will be using throughout the presentation, which will you know, help you understand not only where I'm coming from, but also what's happening around us in the world. And so I will begin with these. Support network. This is probably one of the most important components that you can have going for you as a self-advocate. Um, it's also called the support system and support system network. And that is a network of people who provide an individual with practical or emotional support. For a person that has a disability, for example, these would be the people that you communicate with on a regular basis. It could be somebody that provides you support in your home. It could be somebody that works with you at work, that works alongside of you. It could be your, your parents, your family, close friends, your doctor, your um, clergy member, whoever that may, you know, may be. Uh, you may have a pastor, you may have a priest and a mom or whoever your spiritual leader would happen to be, that would be part of your support network as well. So having that support network in place has made a huge difference in my life. And I've been attending the RVRC conferences since 2009. And that was the first time I'd ever heard of it as a support network. I knew that I had people that were there with me, but I didn't know 
really what it was called, or even how I was supposed to work with a support system network. So I learned a lot of things during those first few days at the conferences, and also during the first couple of years, I had a lot to learn. And so my support network has been a huge help to me. In fact, part of my support network is sitting with me right now at my feet, and her name is Trini, and she's my emotional support dog. And she will soon be my service dog because I'm training her and working with other trainers to get her ready for a bigger role. And she's already been trained through the Puppies for Parole program. And I'm excited to say she passed with flying colors, and she's doing terrific. But it took a while for us to get on the same page. And you'll have to do that with everybody in your support network as well. Moving on to the next terms, neurotypical. This is a person that is not affected with a developmental disorder or a neurodevelopmental disorder, mental illness, or even being in recovery. So a person that's neurotypical has not experienced any of these things. They're not affected by some of the things that we have in our lives that we are working with. They're not affected by the same challenges as we are. And many of us have had the unfortunate and negative experience of going through situations where not a whole lot was known about what it meant to be neurotypical, what it meant to be a person with a disability that functioned in a neurotypical society. But now we come up with all these different terms to explain things, which is great, but sometimes it may be a little too much. So I'm hoping I'm explaining this well. So I will be using the word neurotypical to refer to people who do not have disabilities, who are not in recovery, and who do not have neurodevelopmental disorders, developmental dis disabilities, or anything like that. So that's what neurotypical is. I will not be using the word normal to describe this situation. I'll be using neurotypical. Neurodevelopmental disorders, and I fall into this group as I have a neurodevelopmental disorder. It's a group of disorders affecting the development of the nervous system, affecting overall brain function, emotion, learning ability, self-control, and memory. Examples of these, and I've got a list of them here, autism spectrum disorders, Tourette's syndrome, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, or ADHD, Red syndrome, fragile X disorder, schizophrenia, traumatic brain injury, communication disorders, and dyslexia. So there are all kinds of different ways. In fact, some of these neurodevelopmental disorders develop later in life. So they don't always develop at the same, you know, early, early onset. Sometimes it's later onset. Sometimes it's because of an accident. My dad, for example, who came with me to the meetings for years, um, he had traumatic brain injury. And... So we had to learn a whole different way of doing things and learning how to communicate with him because there were some things that he perceived differently as a result. And so we had to work with that a little bit in the beginning. But as you can see, he attended with me and also with my emotional support dog at that time, Shiloh. And sadly to say, both of those are no longer with me. My dad's no longer with me and Shiloh's no longer with me as both of them passed away within about a month and a half of each other last year. So you won't be seeing any of them, and I hate it because he's not here with me, at least physically, but I know he's with me in spirit as I do this presentation. So I'm remembering my dad today, so if you can sometime today, just remember him with a moment of silence and Shiloh as well. Proactive, acting in anticipation of future problems, needs, or changes. And I could agree that we are all doing this right now as we are putting together our presentations for Real Voices, Real Choices, and especially for this virtual presentation, which you're now viewing. Um, we looked through all kinds of things. We met for a few minutes so that I got an idea how to share my screen with everyone, made sure the volume went, was just right, made sure the recordings were okay, and that people could see me whenever I come back up on the screen pretty soon again and just all the different little things that have to do with recording a virtual recording so when you're proactive you know that there could be problems ahead that have to be solved you anticipate the best but you also go into it knowing that there may be some things you learn as you go along and that's okay 
we're all in that position and it's all okay for us to say, hey, I don't know something. Let me get back with you while I find out. It's perfectly okay. Positive. And here are some synonyms or words that are very similar to positive. Admiring, appreciative, approving, complimentary, favorable, friendly, and good. So if you happen to be doing any or all these things, then you're being a positive person. And that's what we're talking about today. Another phrase that you probably have heard of is showing up or show up. And that is to become involved with others and make an active contribution to provide help and support for someone. So I could say that through the years, RVRC has done just that for me. They've been very supportive. They've shown up at just the right times to help me understand, you know, different things that are going on, even as we're going through change. So be, not, it's not only just about showing up. It's not just showing up. It's how to show up. And I will also be talking about this. Being positive and proactive makes a huge difference. How you see yourself and others and how others see you. And we live in a time in which there are more challenges than ever to the disability community. There are more challenges than ever. A lot of programs are being cut that once, you know, su provided supports for us. There are a lot of things that are going on. There's still a great deal of misunderstanding and ridicule that sometimes goes along. We refer to this as stigma in the mental health community. But we experience stigma. We experience being treated differently. We experience discrimination. And I think at times it even peaks a little bit. So we're in a time where people need to hear from us. They need to know what is going on. They need to understand a viewpoint different from their own. They need to see where we're coming from. We need to see where they're coming from and somehow start the conversation in a healthy way to where we reach an understanding. And I've seen through the years where this has happened, so I know it can happen. And I believe it can happen. But we all have to take part in that together. And it starts with each and every one of us. So let's take a look at how we see ourselves and others. First of all, you develop more self-confidence. When you're a positive person, when you feel good about things, when you have an op optimistic outlook, you have more self-confidence because you develop it as you go along. In fact, you're not even aware that you're a confident person sometimes. I'm not even aware of it. You see the value in other people as well as yourself. And so you become aware of the world around you. You start paying attention to people. You start paying attention to what they say, uh, what's important to them, how they're feeling today. Checking in with people is very important. And this is another part of staying positive and proactive in today's world, especially with all the disagreements and discord that's going on in the world today. You expect good outcomes and learn to look for solutions. And you can also take the lead more. You can speak up first, you can act first, and so on. You don't have to wait for somebody to do something in order to be part of something. You can actually speak up and start the conversation yourself. So not only do you develop more self-confidence, see the value in other people as well as in yourself, and not only do you expect good outcomes and learn to look for solutions, but you establish and respect healthy boundaries. That means not only do you respect other people's boundaries, but you also have boundaries of your own that you can communicate to others and express that you wish for them to respect you as well. And I see this a lot, especially in talking with people in the dis disability community. Um, for example, if you approach somebody in a wheelchair, you obviously don't sit on the wheelchair arm of that person because that wheelchair is a part of that person's life and how they do things. So that wheelchair is a part of that person. So by stepping back from the wheelchair and talking to them like you would talk to anyone else, that is one way of respecting that person's personal space, but you still treat them like another person. And there are all kinds of examples of healthy boundaries. In fact, whenever I was growing up, I was in and out of clinics and hospitals from the time I was six up to whenever I was 11 years old. And back in those days, there wasn't really a whole lot of talk about healthy boundaries. It was pretty much their boundaries were your boundaries. You had to go where they wanted you to go, eat when it was time to eat, and so forth. 
So it was very easy for me to understand earlier on how a lot of us didn't get that we are supposed to have boundaries for ourselves. That it's okay to say, oh, that hurts. Can you be easy with me on that? Um, you're, you're getting into my space. You know, please back up. We didn't realize that we could say those things back then when we were in that situation. And a lot of people still find themselves in that. And it's, a, it's a phenomenon. But people are working around that and learning now that they can establish healthy boundaries. So quick rehab. recap here. How you see yourself and others. You develop more self-confidence. You see the value in other people as well as in yourself. And you expect good outcomes and learn to look for solutions and solve problems. You take the lead more. You establish and respect healthy boundaries. So that means you have boundaries for yourself as well as others. And you can communicate those boundaries. I do all the time. How others see you. They see your confidence. They see value in you. They recognize you as a leader and someone who brings value. They respect your boundaries and personal space. And here's the biggest bonus of all. You can be more and do more in life. So being positive and proactive opens a lot of doors. And that's one of the reasons why I talk a lot about being positive and upbeat. Even my Facebook page shows where I have more positive, upbeat things on it all the time. I choose not to post everything that is negative, except whenever I want to talk about something or start the conversation. That's the only time I do that. Otherwise, I try to be as positive and proactive as possible. And I try to practice peace as much as possible with people because we need a lot of that in this world. Moving on. Why do we need to stay positive and proactive? And again, I show the same, same things here about why we need to stay positive and proactive because it makes a difference in our communications with other people. It makes a big difference in society, our interactions with people on a daily basis. And all you have to do is walk into a Walmart, for example. During this time, and I realize that I'm dating this presentation a little bit, but during specifically this time in which we're practicing social distancing in restaurants, in other public places, we're trying to follow guidelines that are supposed to keep us safer and others safer. There are some people that don't necessarily want to follow the rules. And so you may be seeing somebody go into the aisle the wrong way while you're trying to follow the rules and go the right way. And I've actually seen people get into arguments over this. It's not necessary, people. It's not necessary at all. We need to be the example because they're looking at us. And even though a lot of people may not sometimes understand what we have to say, or they don't clearly hear what we have to say at times about the issues that affect us and concern us, we can speak up. We can start the conversation. And there need to be more of us out there doing just that. We need to be speaking up. We need to let our legislators know that the issues that are coming up in our elections are of concern to us and explain why they're in concern to us. And by doing so, we have a lot more positive outcomes than we do negative outcomes, but we still have a long way to go. We've come a long way in self-advocacy. We really have, but we still have a long way to go. So the first point is show up, how to be present and ready for any situation. Now, you've probably heard this phrase a lot because it's a, it's a very popular catchphrase, knowing, knowing to show up when needed knowing when to show up in any situation, whether it's a community event, whether it's school, whether it's work. You hear about people saying, well, somebody needs to show up a lot more than they're showing up. Well, this is what they're talking about. It's not just showing up on time, even though that's also important. It's about being there. It's about being present, being ready, and just being in the moment. What it means to show up. It's not just showing up, but how you show up. Be there for someone else. Be present. Provide help and support to somebody. If somebody needs your help, be there for them. Say, hey, I can do this. I can help you with this. Let, let me help you. Maybe we can work on a solution together. Encouraging others to be their very best. That is another thing that has helped me so much because in attending the conferences for the very first time, there were people right there at the ready ready to encourage me and help me understand what I was doing because I didn't have a clue. I was there to help my parents find solutions that would help make their lives a little bit easier because my dad and I were taking care of my mom at the time. 
and dad was a caregiver and so was I to an extent more of a reluctant caregiver but we had to learn some different things and I thought well this might be a good opportunity for me to do that plus I had just gotten involved with NAMI at the time NAMI Missouri and so I was invited to come to the conference and to sign up for it so I did had no idea what I was getting myself into but thank goodness I did because I met probably some of the most supportive people I have ever met in my entire life. And that network just keeps growing and growing all the time. And I'm very thankful for it. So you'll probably hear me talk a lot about Real Voices, Real Choices, or RVRC, and why it means so much and to so many others. Because I have a hard time explaining it even to other people. And most people have not heard of this conference. Even after 10 years still going, they have not heard of the self-advocacy conference, and they have not heard about what we're doing in this conference that's making a difference in so many lives. They have not heard of that. So you'll probably hear me talk about this a lot. Anyway, back to where I was. Taking responsibility for your own actions. If you do something wrong, say so. I mean, admit that you were wrong. It's okay to do that. But then... When you're being proactive, you move forward. You come up with a plan to move forward from that point forward to make things right and better. So take responsibility for your own actions. Be prompt and punctual. Of course, we all know that. We're taught that in our classes, at work, everything else, the importance of being on time. Listen. Pay attention. And be in the moment. Be in the present. Um, sometimes that's hard to do, especially for people that have PTSD. Um, Sometimes their minds will go back to a time that was very traumatic for them. And it could happen at any moment without warning. And so one of the therapies that people with PTSD engage in is learning how to be present, how to be in the moment, and to experience what's going on around them. And that helps them to stay focused and centered. And here's a practical tip I included. Update your calendar and check it each day. Because even now, as I'm starting my own business, I'm finding that I'm adding a lot more to my calendar than I used to. I have a lot of workshops that I go to, and this is part of the reason why I do Zoom a lot, is because I have meetings with different people remotely. And I get to talk to a lot of people and correspond with them, interact with them, and learn things. So I'm taking virtual courses. I'm getting ready to do my first virtual course later on. So I'm meeting with all kinds of people to learn how to do these things. I'm taking classes. I'm in meetings. I do all kinds of things. So it's important that I get this information on my calendar because I have a tendency to overbook. And sometimes that gets me into trouble. So I've had to sometimes step back and figure out how can I make this better going forward. And so that's an example of what it means to show up. If you make a few mistakes along the way, it's okay. But then figure out a way to move forward from there so you don't keep making the same mistakes so that you can help everybody else move forward as well. Speak up. How to speak up for yourself and for others. So we talked about showing up, but now we're going to talk a little bit about speaking up. And this is something that we do as self-advocates. We know not only how to speak up for ourselves, but we know how to speak up for others that either don't know how to speak for themselves yet, or maybe they can't speak. Maybe they need somebody to speak for them. And, you know, every situation is different. But this is a big part of self-advocacy. In fact, this is one of the hallmarks, is learning how to speak up. Know your rights under the Americans with Disabilities Act with HIPAA and other supportive legislation, including the Fourth Amendment. Know what your rights are. Because there are people, for example, that have trouble breathing with the mask on because they have respiratory issues or whatever. They need to say that at the very beginning. When you see that person at the door that says, okay, where's your mask? You need to be able to say, hey, I have trouble breathing and I cannot wear a mask in the store because of that. If you speak up, there are provisions for that. They can still let you in the store and to shop. You will have to practice social distancing more and you may they may come up with alternatives for you to use while you're in the store. You may not be able to stay in there as long, but, you know, that's another thing. I don't know how that's going to work. But just know that you can speak up for yourself. So know what your rights are. Know how you're protected. 
know which provisions are being provided for you in your particular situation, whether it's the workplace or anywhere. Know what your rights are and be willing to speak up for those rights. Support your support network. Now, this is a biggie, and here's why. Because a lot of the people in your support work network, they work with maybe 10 people, hundreds of people, who knows? They work with a lot of other people besides you, maybe. And so being able to give them that space, that wiggle room, is so important. I mean, I had to learn, for example, with my doctors and, and people that I talk to, whenever I call, I ask, if there's a time that you could get back with me, please get back with me on this. And then I try to use that time to its full advantage. I have questions written down so that I can ask them what I need to know. And also, supporting your support network means if somebody does something right, let them know. I mean, I'm also talking to people that are part of an independent living network. And so I have that in my area as well. And so I always let them know when they're doing something right. I mean, there are a lot of things that we probably need that aren't being done. I mean, they know that. Everybody that's in your support network is going to know that to an extent. But we need to let them know that they're also doing some pretty good things, too, and that we do appreciate them being there for us. And it takes a few seconds, but it's well worth it. If you know you can help someone or can do something, say so. And I think there's a lot of people that think for some reason that just because we have a disability doesn't mean that we can't do much of anything. That's not true. That's a false assumption. So if we can prove that we can help somebody in any way, if we say, hey, I know how to do that. May I help? Sure. People welcome help. They welcome somebody working along with them. I mean, we were meant, really as people, I think, we were meant to interact, to be interdependent, to work together. We were meant to do that. And yes, we can work independently. And yes, we can have somebody help us once in a while. But really, we are an interdependent society. We learn to work with each other to help each other. Whatever, whatever it is. If, somebody, if I know I'm not good at something else, somebody else is. For example, I have trouble with math. I could ask somebody to check my figures for me sometimes to make sure I've got everything in the right place. So that works as well. And people, most important, people need to hear from you. They hear from everybody else. They hear from news reports, which may or may not be 100% accurate. They see, you know, people being rude. They may have run into somebody that's in a wheelchair that was, was down the route to them. Who knows? I mean, we're all at different poor lives where we're dealing with all kinds of things. So we need to give each other grace. We need to extend that little bit of wiggle room to them because we don't know what their situation is. And they don't know what we're going through either unless we speak up. So people need to hear from me. I know people need to hear from me because that's how we learn to work together. So remember, most of all, in speaking up, that people need to hear from you. They need to know if something's bothering you. They need something's not right. They need to know when something is right, when they are doing the right thing to help you. They need to know that they matter. So people need to hear from you. So know your rights. Support your support network. If you know someone that needs help or you, you know you can help them, say so. Be willing to offer it. If they say no, that's the worst that can happen. You've done your part. People need to hear from you. Wise up. Now, this was something that I had to really rethink whenever I was doing this presentation because originally I had put in a phrase that normally would be considered a negative phrase. So I thought, well, how can I change this up? So then I got to thinking, when people are wise, they know when and when not to do something. They know when to respect boundaries. They know when to voice their own boundaries. And they know when and when not to speak up. They know when it's the right time to do something and when it's the wrong time to do something. So that got to thinking, wise, wise up. So that's why I have wise up in this particular list. So we know to show up, to speak up, and now we know to wise up. Knowing what, when, and how to deal. Knowing when not to do something is also a big deal. So here are some guidelines and some tips to kind of help you along the way. 
I know that there's probably not a whole lot of room for interaction in this presentation because we're not doing this in person. But this is something you can practice moving forward. Even as soon as you click out of this link, you can start practicing these very things now. When in doubt, don't. Listen before you speak. So listen to what something what somebody's saying to you before you speak out because they may have something important to tell you that you might need to know. So be sure to listen before you speak. There's a time and a place for everything. And since I come from a faith-based faith stance at times, I recall a verse in Ecclesiastes, and you probably hear in the Bible, in Ecclesiastes, there's a set of verses that say, there's a time to every purpose under heaven. And you've heard it in the song, Turn, 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 if you've ever heard the song before on the radio. So there's a time and place for everything. There's a time and a place for everything to happen or to be done somewhere else, some other time. So there's a time and place for everything. When you wise up, you know when it's the right or the wrong time to say or do something. And one of my classmates, really cool saying that she put into her book. In fact, I quote it often on Facebook and in some of my writing. I quote, she used to say, silence is the best substitute for knowledge. And I have used this moving forward ever since. And it really is. If something, it's best to just stay silent. Go ahead and pay attention to what's going on around you. Go ahead and check things out, listen to the conversation, find out what people are talking about before you say something. And this used to be something I struggled with whenever I was younger because it was one of those communication skills that I just wasn't very good at. And so I spoke a lot out of context. I did a lot of crazy things whenever I was younger. And people just didn't why I would do this. And so a lot of times I got yelled at and told to shut up. So I learned to be very quiet. I learned not to say much of anything. So people thought I was naturally quiet and shy, when actually I'm just more reserved. In fact, people knowing me today realize far distance from where I used to be. But I've also learned how to exercise wisdom. And that means to know when and when not to say something and to pay attention to what's going on. So be alert to what's changing or different around you. This is a key facet of mindfulness. If you've heard of people practicing mindfulness, that's what this is about. It's learning to be alert to everything else that's happening around you, to stay grounded, to stay in the present, so that you can problem solve better. You can stay focused, and you can move forward. So knowing what, when, and how to do something is a big deal. But also knowing when not to do something is also a big deal. So just go over these and think about these again. When in doubt, don't listen before you speak. A time and place for everything. And you know when it's the right or wrong time to say or do something. And be alert to what's going on around you. So that's part of wising. Now, we know to speak up. We know to uh, show up, we know to rise up, and we know to wise up as well. So let's talk about rising up, rising to the occasion. When you see a chance to do something, take be the first person to say something. Be the person that starts the conversation. Um, be the person that shares a little bit of humor now and then to help people feel more at ease around you. There are all kinds of ways to rise up. So we show up, we speak up, up and we rise up. So when we wise, we know when or when not to do something. When we rise up, we take action when we know it's the right thing to do. And here's another quote that I pulled out of my mom's yearbook, her senior yearbook. Somebody, and I don't know for sure who said it, um, you can ask me later in email and I can get that information to you if you need to know who said something. But here's another quote that I use. Do to others as you'd have them to do to you, but do it first. There's nothing wrong with being the first person to do something. There's nothing wrong with taking the initiative. In fact, it's evil in our society if we do that, if we, if we speak up first. Exercise confidence, even if you're not there yet yourself. And I do this a lot. In fact, um, one of the ways I introduce myself sometimes whenever I'm giving presentations is I'm terrible at doing introductions, but I do them anyway. 
And so that's a big part of developing confidence. Even if you're not sure of something, go ahead and try something anyway. Go ahead and do it. Be true to yourself as you go. You have sometimes a stammering issue. Like, for example, sometimes I stutter just a little bit. I may not always speak right, but as the song goes by War, there's a group called War, and they had a song out years ago, Why Can't We Be Friends? There's a part in there that says, sometimes I don't speak right, but then I know what I'm talking about. And so I know what I'm talking about, even if I may not say it exactly right, I do know what I'm talking about, and I try to let people know, hey, if I need to repeat something, if I need to say it a different way, let me know if you're not understanding me. I'll be glad to do that. And it works great because everybody has a little something going on, some kind of quirk, something different about them. We all have something different about us. We are all different. And we can celebrate those differences together. Do and be your very best. Carpe diem. Seize the day. Make it yours. Make this your day. This is your day to accomplish things. This is your day to make a difference. This is your day to bring happiness to somebody else's life, to share that happiness that you have in your heart with someone else. This is the day to do it. Do it now. This is, this is today. Do it now. Now is the time. Don't be afraid to change and grow. Put your best self forward. Be the first to say hi. And if you see someone needs help, offer to help. I've mentioned this a few other times with uh, speaking up, with wising up, and with other things. So these are all up things to do. So exercise confidence. Do and be your very best. Seize the day. Don't be afraid to change and grow. Put your best self forward. Be the first to say hi. And if you see someone that needs help, offer to help. And you could probably think of even more things as you go along to help you rise up to the occasion. So remember, speak up, show up, wise up, and rise up. Build up. Encourage others and give sincere compliments. There's nothing better to a person to hear than a sincere compliment that's meant for them, something that they've done right. Maybe something about that person that you like. Maybe it's a sunny smile, a sunny disposition, the way that they're always listening to you when you have something to say. It could be a number of things. Their sense of humor. Let them know that. It's not a bad thing to do, especially people that it's often taken for granted for. So thinking again, back to your support networks. There are people that work with hundreds of other people each day. Day in, day out. And sometimes they don't always get a break. You know, say something to them that shows that you're paying attention. Let them know that. Because it makes a difference. They don't feel like that they're taken for granted nearly as much when they hear from somebody like you. And you may be the only person that they hear from. So in building up, sincere compliments go a long, long way in this world. Especially when we see so much negativity. And I repeated the same phrase I did the last time. Do to others as you'd have them do to you, but do it first. Let someone know when they're doing the right thing. Thank someone. Write a note or a letter. And I used to do this all the time. I used to write cards to people. I used to send things a lot. And then somewhere along the line, I stopped doing that. It was just almost as if something snapped and I couldn't do it anymore. And I talk a lot about people that have PTSD or else they're experiencing grief or they're dealing with a number of issues in their lives, sometimes they may not necessarily think to thank somebody or something like that. Maybe the things that they used to do so well before, maybe after experiencing a traumatic event, that suddenly just stopped. For reasons they don't yet understand, there's a block in their mind, whatever it is, they stopped doing that. And so I had to go back to where I made it more of a conscious effort to do this to where I would write somebody a thank you note, send that text, um, send a message on Facebook, you know, make a comment under somebody else's comment, something that you've seen somebody do or maybe something that they are, something that you like about them as a person. Let them know that. We all need that positivity moving forward. We all need that. Everybody needs it. And here's a biggie that probably nobody ever thinks about. Compliment someone in front of someone else. So, for example, 
I have an aunt that, you know, I use here, Aunt Harriet makes the best pecan pie. You're telling somebody that. Uh, one of my aunts makes the best Mississippi mud dessert that I've ever tried anywhere. And so I'm always good to talk this up at family reunions. I said, oh, you've got to try that Mississippi mud. That is so good. I don't know how she does it, but she just makes it so good. And say it in front of the person who makes it. It makes their day. It's a great thing. Um, excuse me. Use I statements. Example, I like how you have something nice to say about someone. I like the way you smile. I like the way that you... Um, always have something good to say about somebody. And I, and I like how you pay attention to whenever I have a concern. You know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to go back to you, but maybe it's something that they do that you've seen them do for others. You recognize that they're a good leader. Whatever it is, show that appreciation through an I statement. Use you statements sparingly, but always use them in an upward fashion. You were right. You really gave a good presentation on that the other day. I learned something from that. That's an example of a you statement and an I statement used together. You know, you really did good at that presentation the other day. I actually learned something from that, and I think I'm going to try it starting now. Those are good things to say. We can make a difference. We can. And the very last thing on this particular point of building up Remember, a smile is worth a thousand words. So even if you have nothing to say at the moment, you can always give them a pleasant smile. That's worth so much. So, recap on building up. Sincere is the best way to go. So make sure that if you're complimenting somebody that you're being sincere and you're not just throwing words out there just to hear yourself talk. Make sure it's a sincere compliment. Let someone know when they're doing the right thing. Thank someone. Write a note or a letter. Maybe do something special for them. Um, if you can, take them out to eat. Maybe get an ice cream cone for them or something. Share a dessert that you've made. Bring them over dinner. Um, spend some time with them. Go sit out on a swing with them and just enjoy nature. I mean, there are all kinds of ways to build up somebody else. Use I statements. Use you statements sparingly, but use them always in an upward fashion. Upward. Remember, always look up. And remember, a smile is worth a thousand words. So not only do we show up, but we also build up, we wise up, we rise up, and we speak up. So all of these things are good up things to do. And we can all start practicing those right now. And now, here's a big one, and this is where you come in. This is where you come in. Up to this point, I've been talking more about interacting with other people, showing support for your support network, um, speaking up, letting legislators know when you're concerned about a particular issue because they do need to hear from you. Everybody needs to hear from you at some point in time. And if they don't hear from you, they don't understand your viewpoint. And this is a good way to keep people from talking over you is if you let them know, hey, I'm important. I've got something to say and I want to share it. You know, be sure to do that. Speak up. It's okay. So we speak up, we show up, we wise up, we rise up, and we build up. So let's talk about staying up. Stay up. Practice self-care and mindfulness to be at your best. And there are all kinds of things that go under self-care. And probably some of you are already doing this. And so give yourself a pat on the back. You're doing the right thing. Keep it up. So stay up. Keep it up. Take care of yourself as well as others in your life. You have to make sure that you take time for you. And there's nothing wrong with saying that you need to take time out for yourself, that you need me time. There's nothing wrong with that. Self-care and mindfulness are great ways to heal and strengthen yourself. And here's a biggie that you hear a lot of people say because the CDC says it, especially during this time when we need to practice more safety. Stay home when you are sick. And I was surprised, even back when we had issues with different types of flu back in the 1990s, early 2000 decade, that a lot of people would end up coming to work even though they were sick. And while they were trying to think about the bottom line 
and everything for their work and they were trying to you know deal with the bottom line they weren't really helping themselves and they weren't nearly as productive as they would have been if they were healthy so stay home when you're sick get some good rest and a good night's sleep this is something i've kind of struggled with a little bit recently and we've all been through it you know especially with the storms i wake up in the middle of the night there's a storm and so is my dog trini and she doesn't like hearing wind she's scared of wind so we end up you know being together i tell her it's okay trini just stay close to me it's going to be okay and then she helps calm me down too so we're both not too crazy about storms but we get through it together we do pretty good enjoy fresh air and spend some time outdoors Learn to say no when you need to. This is part of setting healthy boundaries. Learn when to say no to something. Don't overextend yourself in your schedule. Be sure to check that calendar. If you can't do something at a certain time, say so. You know, I've got a meeting that's coming up next week, for example. I've got a meeting Wednesday afternoon. I'm supposed to talk to some people during a Zoom conference. So I will be, you know, taking that time out so I tell people not to call me during that time I can't talk with you during our usual conversation time because this is what I'm doing so learn to say no when you need to do so set healthy boundaries if you want somebody to keep their distance from you while they're talking say so if you don't want to hug somebody say so if you do make sure it's okay with the other person but set healthy boundaries and respect others practice good hygiene this is another thing that I've heard lots of complaints about regarding people when they're out in public. Sometimes either for some reason they can't help it or maybe don't realize that they can do something to better themselves. Again, practice kindness. Practice good hygiene for yourself, but practice kindness when it comes to others. And try to be understanding of them. Include those in your support network to help you be your best. Maybe there's something that you want to learn differently to make your life a little easier. So one of the things that I like to do sometimes is I bring this up in conversation, for example. One time I talked to a nurse friend of mine. I said, what other alternatives could I consider besides wearing a mask if I have trouble breathing? And if I'm in some place where, bottom line, they just will not you know, be accepting of anything, even when I explain that I have trouble breathing and need not to wear a mask. If I run into a situation where somebody wants to say, well, that doesn't matter, this is what we do. She suggested alternatives for me. So I'm going to be looking into a face shield because it will allow me to breathe while still providing a protective covering of some kind over my face in situations where they have mandated this, such as Columbia, Missouri. So I could actually have a face shield that I wear when I step out of the car, when I go into a building, um, when I leave the building, I will have something to cover my face at least for that time being. So asking somebody, you know, something about their expertise, you know, something that maybe they know that you don't, that they can kind of share with you on. And she was more than happy because I asked her to. She was more than happy to provide me with some solutions that would help me long term so include those in your support network your friends parents um, people you work with your co-workers include those that are in your support network because they're helping you to be the best you can be and to get the most out of your life they're helping you you know some of it's because it's part of their work but they're doing it because they care and so when you include them in your conversations that not only helps you be at their best at your best but helps them be their best too so it's something that goes good like the cereal commercial goes good goes around and around and around take care of your pets your ESA's your support your emotional support animals and your service animals take care of those because they don't get to communicate like we do they, they communicate but they do so in barks whippers meows purrs chirps whatever it is that they do but take care of your pets because they're an important part of your life. They support, they're a part of your support network as well. Make sure that they're up on their vaccines. Make sure that they're up on their care, their flea and tick control, their food. You know, make sure that they're getting fresh water every day and spend time with them. Take them out for walks, cuddle with them, talk to them. So take care of your pets too. Can't leave pets out of the picture. They're 
our animal friends are very important to us. Mindfulness. Now, this is a practice that I think it comes from the Buddhist religion. I'm not really sure. It comes from a variety of different religions and different faith-based um, things here. And I'm not really sure exactly where it all comes from, but it comes down to this. Mindfulness is when you are present in the moment, wherever it is that you happen to be. You are aware of everything that's going on around you. And this is something I had to learn from my life coach, how to be grounded, how to be in the present moment. So she gave me grounding exercises to use whenever I found myself going back in my mind to the past or something happening to where all of a sudden I couldn't think past a traumatic moment that happened to me. It just popped up all of a sudden and I didn't know what to do with it. She showed me how to practice mindfulness in that situation. So, for example, she would have me look at three or five things. You know, pick three things that are blue. Um, pick two more that, you know, are green. Um, what sounds are you hearing now? Just different things to pay attention to that took me outside of where I happened to be at that moment in my mind and to think about what was going on around me. So this is a big part of mindfulness is being aware of everything else that's around you that's going on at the moment, whether it's, you know, how many trees there are in somebody's front yard as you're walking by. Just taking all of that in and realizing that it's okay. You're here. You're now. It's going to be good. Whatever you do from this point forward, you're going to be okay, no matter what. You're going to be fine. So practicing mindfulness, using grounding techniques, like I mentioned, is another good way to take care of yourself. Self-care is so essential if you're going to be a good person and to help, you know, to be proactive and to be positive. It's so important to practice mindfulness, whether you're faith-based, Whatever your religion, your philosophy is, it's good to practice mindfulness. Make good, wise choices for yourself. Um, if you can choose to eat good food over junk food, do it. If you can um, skip the soda, maybe drink water with a little bit of lemon in it. There are all kinds of different things that you can do to make good, wise choices for yourself. Going to bed early. Um, if you're talking to somebody who tends to be negative around you and you really feel drained by them, knowing when to stop the conversation, that's another thing too. Sometimes you have to walk away and that's good. That's not a bad thing at all. It means that you're taking care of yourself and it means that you're also taking a stand, letting somebody know that you can't tolerate that kind of behavior and that you're going to move on. So in recap, before I get too carried away here, we show up, we speak up, we wise up, we rise up, we build up, and we stay up. So we know how to do all of these things and to take care of ourselves as well. And finally, the very last point here is, if you've heard the James Brown song, get on up. Now it's time to take action. What does this look like for you? This is another question that my life coach has also asked me, even as I deal with grief in experiencing life without my dad and without Shiloh. Um, this is something I have to think about a lot. Getting on up, keeping moving. What does confidence look like for me? What does, you know, moving forward look like for me? What does being a leader look like? Think of all of these things when you're taking all this into consideration. Think about what does this look like for you? How will you be? How will you be different than you are now or before you saw this presentation? Think of how you can be different moving forward, how you can do things differently, how you can make a difference, how you can speak up more, how you can learn to recognize the signs and know when it's right to say something or when it's not the right thing to do at the moment. There are all kinds of ways to do this. But the most important thing is to stay up at all times. Remember the word up. That's what what's up is about, is staying up, keeping in mind the word up, looking up, not down. Look up. So a quick recap. Here is how we know what's up. We show up. We speak up. We wise up. We rise up. 
we build up, we stay up, or you know, keep it up, however you want to look at it, and then we get on up. We move forward. We take it from this point forward, and there's no time like the present. The time is now. Let's be upwards in our speech, in the way we do things, the way we communicate with others, the way we show support to our support networks, the way that we express our concerns, however it is, let's make it a challenge to ourselves. And I'm taking the challenge too. Let's be up. When people ask us what's up, let's stay there. Let's be up. Let's speak up. Let's show up. Let's wise up. Let's rise up. Let's build up. And let's keep it up. Let's take care of ourselves and stay up. So now it's time for us to get on up. And I thank you very much for your time today. And just remember this moving forward. Always look up. Thank you. Robin, thank you so much for that great presentation. And I